Jeff, in latter days, you were kind of my boss for rocket racing, a project that, well, late and off lamented for a variety of reasons, but you're into a whole new shtick now. You're into a whole new generation and creating a new company, Agile Aero. Uh, tell us about your plans at this point and at this stage of the game, why do you want to start over? <laughs> well, where x -Core was most successful was when we were doing engine development. And the reason for that was we developed the techniques for trying rocket engines out very, very quickly. So no matter how crazy the idea was, we could try it. And a surprising number of them you know, work, even when you might not want to trust that they would. When we got to doing custom airframe development for supersonic airframes, it got a lot slower. And there were so many details to deal with. It's in the textbooks, even for supersonic aircraft design, that supersonic aircraft are tightly integrated designs where everything affects everything else and that makes them difficult to design. Towards the end of my time at x I was starting to question that and say to myself, if I'd known everything 10 years ago that I know now, we might have been able to approach the design of a ship that could be designed and tried out quickly. Uh, and after I left x I said, you know, rather than setting up another company to do one vehicle for one market that interests me, why don't I take what I've learned and set up a company to do vehicles for all of the other people who've had the same problem, have interesting visions for high-performance aircraft or spacecraft, and find themselves trying to put a team together who've never done this before to do it for the first time. So we're really setting up to kind of fill the kind of niche that scaled composites once filled for subsonic aircraft prototyping only for high subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic vehicles. What are the kind of projects that wet your whistle? What are the things that you're looking for to not only fulfill the mission that you're looking for, but also to prove that Agile Aero truly has the right stuff? Well, I can't talk too much about the various customer applications because for each customer, they're proprietary. What I can say is we're talking to about five different ones. Uh, they cover quite a range uh, from very small to uh, fairly large. Um, they're not all rocket powered, but some of them are. Uh, and they're not all space related, but some of them are. Uh, and they cover a speed range that goes from high subsonic through hypersonic. I've known you more than a decade. I've watched you in some extraordinary positions doing not just innovative work, but disruptive work. What is the difference between what was happening in the XPRIZE generation, which was a whole different attitude in a number of different ways, and where we are now? Do we still have the ability to be as innovative and as disruptive as we were a decade ago? More so, I would think. The challenge in the, in the business has always been the availability of capital. It's very easy to come up with interesting ideas for as yet unserved markets that the technology will permit you to solve. The challenge is to find one where you can convince people that there's money to be made so that they'll put the money into the project. And certainly in the space side of the business, there's literally never been as much availability of capital as there is right now. Aviation, of course, is not quite so favorable. Uh, but there is a whole generation of people coming up who made their money in other technology businesses who remain very fascinated by aviation and space. And that's helped, but more of what's helped is that there have been some success stories. There have been companies in the space arena now that, you know, made money. And that's always a great way to get more money is to show that you can make money. How dangerous is the current legal system to innovation? How much of a problem is that presenting now or likely to present in the future? And is there really a fix for it? It's one of many negative factors. Uh, I think it's a mistake to think of it or any one of them as the insuperable barrier. Mm -hmm. It's more that, you know, when you look at an area that's got, you know, the usual execution risk, can the team do it? Plus the market risk, we aren't sure there's a market there. Plus the technical risk, can you really make the thing work? Plus the regulatory risk, plus the liability risk. You know, at some point people throw up their hands and say, that's too much. Uh, unless there's a billion dollars to be made, in which case no risk is too high. You know, people will, will go for it. Um, but, at, you know, in a, liability law mostly is controlled at the state level, not at the national level. There's reluctance at the national level 
to engage in tort reform because one party has a vested interest in not reforming torts mm -hmm. and one party has an ideological bent to not overruling the states. Mm -hmm. uh, the, that opened up a lot of opportunity in the space regime for us to undertake tort reform at the state level and that was fairly successful. And there, as a result, that built up some momentum that in the recent bill that came through in 2015 on space regulation, we were able to make some small moves towards national tort reform in that area, which was quite surprising to people. And that was because of what had happened at the states. So I could imagine an avenue where tort reform could take place in a number of forward-looking states. Those states would then begin to attract preferentially aviation business, and eventually people would say, maybe we should do something about that. Aero TV is brought to you by... Are you stall smart? Ever since Orville and Wilbur took to the skies, pilots have been taught that the more airspeed you have, the better off you are. But over the last 100 plus years, we've learned that's not always the case. Take stalls for example. The common belief is that if you have sufficient airspeed, the aircraft won't stall. The fact is, an airfoil always stalls at the same critical angle of attack in relation to the relative airflow, regardless of airspeed, configuration, or weight. Learn more at AspenAvionics.com.